It is actually so nice outside today and I'm in here talking about Netflix. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Karen and I'm really excited about this video today. I was meaning to make this video actually a few weeks ago now, but so many things just kept coming up and I couldn't actually get around to doing it. Because in order to do it, that would have required some time dedicated to actually finishing the thing that I'm going to talk about. So after finally finding the time, I'm now able to talk about the first season of Lemmy Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events on Netflix. You guys honestly don't know how happy I am that I finally finished watching all eight episodes of the first season. It was absolutely amazing. So I can't quite remember whether it was early last year or the end of 2015, but when I first found out that a series of unfortunate events was going to be a TV show on Netflix, I was actually extremely excited. But at the same time, I was very scared because anybody who is an avid book lover knows that issues can arise whenever your favorite book series is being adapted into a movie or a TV show. This was actually a particularly weird situation for them because not only did they have to make sure that they were doing justice to the book series, but they also had to make sure they were gonna do as good of a job, if not better, than the movie. I think for the most part, most fans of A Series of Unfortunate Events really enjoyed the movie when it came out. Even though it only adapted the first three books and then there was a bit of a rearrangement with the plot there, it did an extremely good job of capturing the essence of the series, not to mention the music was great, the set was great, the writing was great, and you have to think about all the actors. I mean, for starters, they had Jim Carrey as Count Olaf, which is extremely hard to beat. Like, it's Jim Carrey. And then they had, like, so many other great actors in the movie, too. Like, they had Jude Law was Lemony Snicket. You've got Timothy Spall. You've got Meryl Streep. Billy Connolly. Cedric the Entertainer was in it. Jennifer Coolidge and Craig Ferguson were even in it. Catherine O'Hara was in it as Justice Strauss, which is awesome because she also played Dr. Orwell in the TV show. And then if I remember right, I think it was Emily Browning and Liam Aiken that played Violet and Klaus. All the actors did such an amazing job and the movie had hardly any flaws despite the changes from the series. The Netflix show had to basically compete against everybody's conception of how great the movie was too. I honestly do think that the first season of this show managed to really do the book series justice and hold its own against the movie, which was great. I do love the movie and the TV show equally. I think they are both great in their own way. The movie tend to be a little bit more sophisticated and romantic in a sense, but the TV show is very quirky and a lot funnier. So the first season of the TV show does adapt to the first four books, so it already has that up against the movie. And it is renewed for a second season, if I heard right, so we're already going to be seeing way more of the series get adapted than, than we did with the film, which I'm very excited for because I think that was the only thing with the film is that a lot of people felt robbed that we didn't get to see the whole story. And now based on the popularity of the TV show, it looks like we finally will. And I think if there's one thing that everybody that watched the TV show can agree on, it's that the theme song is probably the best part of the whole thing. Like, that's just so catchy. Every time I went to watch a new episode, I think I was more excited for the theme song than anything. First thing I actually want to talk about is the big debate about whether Neil Patrick Harris nailed Count Olaf, and that is a definite yes. So costume-wise, he looks perfect. Like, he looks basically like a human version of the illustration, which was great. His acting really owns up to the character that we all basically grew up reading. He knows how to be menacing, but at the same time, he also knows how to bring a quirkiness to the role, and I think that actually really worked for him. And there's still gonna be debates going forward whether or not Neil was better or Jim was better. Honestly, like, they were both perfect for their own reasons. I think I even read a comment online somewhere saying if you took Neil's body and put Jim's voice with it, that would have been the ideal Count Olaf. Like, there's just so many 
different things with each of them that were perfect and I don't think this is really needs to be debated they were both great I do have to admit though when I first found out that Neil had been cast I was very scared because I didn't know if he would actually be convincing and I do think in that entire first season he nailed it like even when he's pretending to be Stefano or Captain Sham he really owned the character as a whole. I did like that he had his own take on Stefano like it was a very it wasn't exactly how I would picture it when I was reading the books but the voice was pretty funny. When he was Captain Sham I couldn't help but feel like that the voice he was using was identical to the voice that Jim had used when he portrayed it so that kind of bothered me a little bit just it was just way too similar there but overall I think Neil Patrick Harris totally nailed the role and I think he's gonna have no problem getting into character going forward and then of course I absolutely loved Patrick Warburton as Lemony Snicket in the movie it's actually Jude Law that plays Lemony Snicket and we never actually see his face we get kind of like mysterious glances of him and things like that which I think kind of suited the idea with Lemony Snicket being the whole author of the series and everything but I'm loving that Lemony is so front and center in this series and that we're finally actually seeing Lemony Snicket as more than Daniel Handler's pen name. We're actually seeing him as Lemony Snicket, the character. In part one of the wide window, when they're actually discussing him as being a part of their world, and then later on you see the photo of him with Count Olaf, like that was just so cool. And I think for a lot of us that were true fans of the books, that was really great to see. You know he's going to have a much bigger role than just the narrator going forward, and I'm really excited to see what they do with that. I think Patrick Warburton was a really great choice for Lemony Snicket too, because he's just like so tough and edgy, but so like sophisticated at the same time. And I think he's actually very similar to Daniel Handler in real life. And I wouldn't be surprised if he actually suggested Patrick for this role. I think he is a lot truer to kind of the idea people form of Lemony Snicket when they're reading the books. Now I know I keep going back to the film but watching the series as a whole you could definitely see that there are parts of it where they actually took ideas from the movie. I found a lot of the settings seemed very similar and the music even seemed similar. But yet at the same time the feel of it was so different. I do think that it is good that it did have similar touches to the film given how much people like the film so I think that is good that they are paying homage to that as well. Now I've talked about Patrick and Neil and I just want to say that I think all of the actors absolutely owned all of their roles in the TV show. Because um, like I said earlier, there were so many A-list actors and people that were, were in the movie. All the people coming into this TV show probably knew that they had to do a lot to make sure that they really stood out against the people that were in the first movie. But they did an absolutely great job, even though um, the actors playing Violet Klaus and Sunny aren't really known for anything, they did an absolutely amazing job and they are super talented and I really hope that even after this show is over that they're gonna go far because they they are very talented actors. And the actor that plays Mr. Poe totally nailed it. I really enjoyed Mr. Poe in the movie because he's of course played by Timothy Spall, which many people know from being in Harry Potter and Sweeney Todd. And he's just an overall great actor. Like it's hard to not to watch him in something and enjoy what you're watching because he's just amazing to watch. But the actor that played Mr. Poe in the TV show kept his performance very true to the books, which I think was really good. Like the sneezing and everything, that was missing from the movie. But the fact that they incorporated it into the TV show was great. I have to say that the fact that they've went with the TV show format this time around is really helping them stay truer to the books because they're able to fit so much more into every single episode and cover so much more that the movie just couldn't. The first two episodes, I love that Justice Strauss played a much bigger part than she did in the movie. My absolute favorite thing from this, I think, is the fact that we are already seeing VFD 
at work. Like there's the whole thing with Jacqueline and we're seeing all these people trying to protect the Baudelaire's and make sure that Count Olaf doesn't get away with whatever he's trying to do because it is kind of implied that there's a lot more going on than him just wanting their money. That's the one thing that's different from the book series because I don't think it's until later on that the reader really learns that there's a lot more going on than what we're seeing. So I thought that was a really cool touch that we're already kind of starting to learn about this. And don't get me started on the whole thing with the mother and the father. Oh my god. I thought that whole thing with Colby Smulders and Will Arnett playing the mother and the father was so cool because in the book series it's not implied until later on that their parents might still potentially be alive and if you actually read the Beatrice letters which is the book that Lemony Snicket released after the series was over it's implied that they reunited with their mother and were still searching for their father so I see Will Arnett and Colby Smulders and I'm thinking Oh my god, this is their parents. Their parents are trying to get to them and I'm all excited even though this is so different from the books. I'm just thinking, you know what? I'm okay with this. And then second last episode, you find out it's not their parents. And I'm just so sad at this point. It's like, why are you doing this to my poor heart? It's like, I know you told me to look away, but do you really think I was gonna do that? No. And now I'm about to cry. So thank you for that. And then, of course, they die in a fire. Or at least it looks like they died in a fire, along with one of their three children, which is implied when you see all the Baudelaire's at the Oster Academy, you see two of the children sitting behind them on the bench. That whole thing just made me so depressed. But you know, I really did like seeing those two actors in the show. That really did add further interest to the plot, so I'm really curious to see how those characters plus other characters add to the storyline going forward. So since they are doing the TV format and by the looks of it, they are doing two episodes dedicated to each book. It looks like there might potentially be about three or four seasons. The books tend to get bigger as the series goes along so I don't know if maybe they'll need to dedicate more episodes to the later books, but I'm really hoping that they will be able to keep renewing it and keep adapting it because they did a fantastic job with this first season and I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. I'm really looking forward to seeing where the show goes because I have two theories. First one is about Jacqueline. I know lots of people have seen that her initials are actually JS so a lot of people are convinced she has something to do with the multiple people named JS if you remember reading about that in the actual book series but my theory is that she is actually Kit Snicket. Kit Snicket ends up playing a big part in the last three books so I think it would be really cool if they're actually introducing her all throughout the series and showing how she actually had a big concern for the Baudelaire's the whole time. She's one of my favorite characters from the series so if Jacqueline ends up being Kit, I'm totally okay with that. A second theory, which is actually kind of a bit of prediction, is that the series will end with Lemony adopting the Baudelaire's. Which I know some of you are probably thinking like, what? That's crazy! And like I said, if you read the Beatrice letters, it is implied that they find their mother, but that's not really part of the actual 13 books. And I'm almost kind of wondering, since part one of the wide window, when Count Olaf and Larry are kind of fighting and Larry says that they're with like the fiercest guardian or whatever and Olaf asks him if it's Snicket and a light bulb just went off in my head it's like oh my god is he trying to find them so he can adopt them like immediately I'm just sitting there like yes please when you think about it too like Lemony Snicket Daniel Handler a series of unfortunate events is basically his child Baudelaire's are kind of like his children as a result of that. So I think to have it work out so the Baudelaire's actually meet Lemony and to have him become their father would be so symbolic of 
Daniel Handler's journey with this series. So I'm kind of rooting for that to be the end. It will be a few years from now that we see the end and see what happens. Hopefully we get to see this series all the way through because if for some reason Netflix didn't go beyond season two, I'd be really upset. So I know my ideas were all kind of all over the place with this and I don't really think I got to say everything I was originally hoping to say, but the bottom line is they did an absolutely amazing job with season one. It's truer to the book series, it even does justice to the movie and takes influence from that, but at the same time is able to hold its own. And all of the actors just did a great job and everything, scenery, music, all of that is just perfect. I honestly don't think they could have done a better job with it. I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with this. A lot of people know a series of unfortunate events is so near and dear to my heart as it is what got me interested in reading in the first place. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the next few seasons of this show and I hope you all enjoy it too because it is just fantastic. Alright guys, that is it for my attempted review at the first season of A Series of Unfortunate Events. I really hope that you enjoyed it and maybe this will pique your interest in watching the series. Maybe you just enjoyed seeing what another viewer had to say about it. Did you guys happen to like it? Do you have any theories about what's going to happen going forward? I'd love to hear what you guys think of it and you can comment that down below and if you enjoyed this video I'd appreciate a like and if you like what I do a subscribe would also be very much appreciated thank you for watching spread love and don't be a troll bye